This is the coming revolution in higher consciousness. Listen now to Elizabeth Clare Prophet, educator, author, and authority on the most exciting story of our time, the coming revolution in higher consciousness. We choose wholeness for life because we have made the a priori choice which Moses gave to us. Choose life, not death. His final and most important message to us before he passed to other octaves of light. Consider what this means. We think that choosing life, not death, is a straightforward and a concrete choice. But you see, each time we choose something less than life or light or the holiness unto the Lord, we in fact are compromising that life and therefore choosing death. Any indulgence in the concept of self that is less than that Christ is a choice for death. Any choice to let go of the emotions and to flounder and to allow ourselves to go under in self-pity or anger, to give in to the forces, whether of insanity or any others, the giving in to the first step on the degeneration spiral is a choice of anti-life. It culminates today as we see the wave of teen suicide in America, an unthinkable, unpredictable outcome, yet not so. It is predictable, for life has been denied already, and suicide, whether physical or spiritual, is the culmination of many choices along the way. The squandering of the life force in the chakras, the taking of various types of drugs for the altering of consciousness. Each one of these is a surrender of a precious commodity called life. And what is life? Life is the sacred fire blazing upon the altar of your heart, or should be. That divine spark, that threefold flame you were given from the beginning, it is the point of life, and to choose it is to love it, to obey it, to amplify, to expand, to nourish it, to glorify the name of God in it, and to have a cup of sacred fire that runneth over for one's friend, the family, the stranger, to offer oneself and one's portion that another might have wholeness for life. The path of the bodhisattvas of the Buddha the path of the children of Israel, the disciples unto Christhood, of all the saints and pilgrims. That true path has never been a selfish one, a private asceticism, something whereby we pursue adeptship. Nay, it is a path of the raising up of the light of the mother within you by the power of the Holy Spirit by which you have wholeness for life. We come for healing, not for ease, not for longevity or greater pleasure. We come for healing because unless we be made whole, we cannot raise up our brothers and sisters. It is because we care so much for world pain and those who are beset with it. It is because we care for the nations and their burdens and problems, and those who have coming upon them in this hour, the last plagues. It is because we love that we are determined to make the sacrifice of the human consciousness to stop sacrificing the light within ourselves and the squandering of that light. It is because we love enough and care enough that we gather it is not worth it to us to be alive 
and not to be able to do something about the suffering of our friend on a one-to-one -one basis or the world in general. We are in the midst of a tremendous revolution. It is the coming revolution in higher consciousness. Why do we say it is coming? We are not procrastinators. We know it is here. It is coming like the river of life descending. It is perpetually dawning upon us. It is flowing into our being. And with the experience of this revolution, this acceleration of light within our temple, we know that our God is nigh. We know the meaning of the second coming of Christ. We know its definition is the coming of the Lord, our righteousness of Jeremiah, into our temple to live. We know we were created to be more than hollowed out ones without any light or fire or message or self-determination we were not created to be mannequins or robots to join the race of mechanization man we were created that the most high god could inhabit this temple and if he does not inhabit our temple then we are not fulfilling our reason for being and if the mosques and synagogues and churches of the world and their pastors and priests and rabbis are not teaching us how to be infilled with the mighty presence of God, then they are not fulfilling their reason for being. And they must go to the same fount and first be cleansed that they might cleanse others, first be healed that they might heal others. This is the day of the Lord. It is the acceptable time. It is also the day of the vengeance of our God. It is very clear we see on the horizon great light appearing, the inner knowledge of the universal Christ. And we see the plagues descending. And what is the vengeance of our God? It is not his anger. It is his eternal law, the security of the law of cause and effect that returns to our doorstep that which we have sent out and we must deal with it and this is the law of karma and karma becomes our teacher we have created a guru fashioned out of our own image and likeness for all of our deeds and words and works they have gone forth and as they return to us it is not for punishment but for teaching thus we went the way of self-determination, imitating the angels of light who descended in a declaration of independence from Almighty God. We followed after them because they were glamorous, they were enticing, they offered instant beauty, instant everything, success and knowledge as the gods. And after a while, we decided that they were not the true teachers, but we were hooked and burdened by all of their Cain civilization, all of their materialism and their various ideologies and their communism and their capitalism and all of these vying against one another. And there at the foot of the Christ and the living Buddha is the devotee who simply desires to be free, but is not free because he has been fascinated with their misuse of the light as they become falling stars, burning themselves out in great beauty as they descend. Now, therefore, we are tired of the fallen angel's declaration of independence from Almighty God. We are tired of having a separate will from the Lord God Almighty. We are ready to say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. When we make that affirmation of being which Jesus made when he descended into the body prepared for him in Bethlehem, so we take the first step on the path of self-determination, our declaration of independence in and through Almighty God is the true path of individual Christhood. It is upon this path that our nation was founded by true adepts of the sacred fire on the foundation of the Judeo-Christian tradition embodying all of the vast teachings which our Lord Jesus brought back from the far east where he journeyed in preparation for his mission. 
So we have Joseph, the beloved Saint Germain who founded this nation that we might be free. Free from what? The tyranny of King George? That is a bit irrelevant today. It is the tyranny of the fallen ones and those who propose a path of subjugation, totalitarianism, humanism without God. Without God as the flame burning on the altar of the heart. Therefore, we come in the tradition of the revolutionaries of the spirit, east and west. They fought for and they won their spiritual independence from the false hierarchies. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. It is upon that point that we declare our independence from all other systems, isms, ideologies, compartmentalizations, and separations from one another and from the living God. Remember Gautama Buddha when he sat under the bow tree. Remember when he had to declare his independence from all of the forces of darkness. They challenged him and they said, you do not have the right to be doing what you are doing. It's the same old line, isn't it? You don't have a right to be here. You don't have a right to think what you want to think. You may not meditate or pray. You must do what we say. You must follow the run of the mill, the middle class. You must not stray or deviate from our religion, our systems. No revolutionaries. No one who is different. Our children are brought up in our schools. All must be alike. The equality that is preached in effect becomes a leveling. Yes, the equality of the lowest common denominator, that is equality. We see then that those who fought for physical freedoms and human rights also were fighting for spiritual rights and divine rights. Gautama Buddha was determined to find the key to suffering in the world. He went into samadhi after he dealt with the forces that would deny his right to find the solution to the human imprisonment of the soul. And so he touched the earth with the earth-touching mudra and all of nature and elemental life and the angelic hosts affirmed his right to find God in his own way as it says in the Old Testament, under his own vine and fig tree. This right we cherish. This right we must exercise. Because unless we exercise the right to prove our independence under God's will, no one will understand that the right must be kept and cherished and defended as none other. You see, if we do not show forth fruit, or the exercise of the right, then how will anyone know that the day will come that he must also exercise that right? I'm speaking of role models and heroes and knights. I'm speaking of those who can play a leadership role in life because they have spiritual wholeness. And so we come to be the example and we look now at the chart of the I Am Presence. The great beauty of this configuration, you see all in one your heaven, your lower self, the divine mediator who is the central figure. If you just visualize those spheres within spheres as great spheres of light, they are the individual heaven world vast reaches of cosmic consciousness that are above you surrounding the point of the I am who I am. This is the I am that I am that spoke to Moses, that gave divine direction for the seed of Abraham. 
delivered the miracles at Moses' hand and Aaron's. The light of the I am is above you. As you see the chart behind me, visualize that same sphere of light above you. It is God as God's presence, individualized for each one of us. Out of the point of God the Father there descends the light emanation whom we call Christ. Christos, the anointed one, the Son, and the Son is the great mediator, mediating this powerful light for this, this prodigal son who stands as the lower figure. It is child man, shorn of his identity, for he has lost it through the misuse of the exercise of free will and the misuse of the science of the spoken word. Now, if you will visualize Jesus standing as the lower figure in the chart, you see that violet flame symbolizes the Holy Spirit. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. Moreover, that which appears as three before you were one within him. The Christ or the Holy Christ self was one with the lower figure. Christ dwelled in the temple of Jesus, and so did the Father the I am presence. And so this Lord dwelt in Jesus. Jesus, our brother, and the great example showed us that the reason for being in embodiment on earth is that the mighty trinity of life should be self-realized in us through the three persons of the trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, self-realized through the threefold flame in the heart. Here you see the point which declares I am. Because God has declared I am that I am by the very principle and law set forth by Hermes, we understand as above, so below. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Here below we are intended to outpicture, to replicate that which is above. And this is our assignment, our reason for being. And so we declare, lo, God in me, where I am, is the I am that I am. And as we declare this, so a portion of light descends to affirm it, for we are co-creators with God. The point of the mediator, Jesus was the divine advocate and mediator before us. Jesus came to found true religion. Religion means to bind man back to God. It is the Latin root of the verb from which religion is taken. Jesus came to stand at that point as the intermediary between ourselves and God. Why do we need that Christ? We need that Christ because we have gone out of the way of the perfection of the Godhead which is of two pure eyes to behold iniquity. The mediator therefore delivers us the light of the Father and transfers our prayers unto the Father. I speak then of the universal Christ whom Jesus embodied, whom you yourself are intended to embody. This is the goal of this path and this revolution. Thus here you stand centered in the violet flame, which is the flame of freedom. Jesus himself received the gift of the violet flame when he was in his final embodiment from the mighty archangel and archaei of the seventh ray. Archangel Zadkiel and holy amethyst initiated him, gave him the violet flame and showed him its use in healing. I would like to give you the example in the life of Jesus and his teaching where he did in fact show the declaration of independence, wholeness for life. Jesus had to affirm his right to be the son of God. He had to affirm and defend his right to declare that God was his father. So listen to this teaching, this mighty initiation that is described by Luke in his 13th chapter. 
There are three separate teachings here, lessons that show how we too must declare our independence if we would be whole. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. Jesus knew the tendency of the human heart to consider that those who have adversity or are persecuted must somehow be less in the kingdom of God, be somehow sinners above all to have deserved such conditions. And so he answered this tendency of the mind to dismiss calamity, to harden our hearts toward those who suffer and to say they must deserve it. He said, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Jesus was showing the opportunity for choice, for the declaration of independence, to be whole or not to be whole, to embrace life, or not to embrace life. So these individuals had personal and planetary karma come upon them, or not necessarily the initiation of darkness unto them could easily have been an initial act without karma. He shows their calamity and he says it will happen to you unless you repent. And so what is repentance? Repentance is going back to putting on the armor of God, the wedding garment, to seal oneself under the shadow of the Almighty and the Lord's angel, Archangel Michael, to fulfill the inner vow the original vow to be God in manifestation here below as above. This is what we vowed to do. Lo, I am come to do thy will, O God. Jesus is making a very pointed lesson about these accidents of life that come suddenly and take us from the screen of life. They were not selected. You are not favorite sons simply because you endure but you have the opportunity to learn, to learn deeply that such things are abroad in the land and to recognize that you do not have any power above those who did suffer calamity to prevent that calamity in your life. But there is a power that does have the ability to seal you in the safety of God. And it is this power of the mighty I am presence that was revealed to Moses. And when the I am that I am sealed that name and gave it to Moses, he said, it is a memorial to all generations. This is my name. And a memorial is something by which we remember. We remember God by his name and what this name means. I am who I am. I will be what I will be. You cannot identify me or describe me. I am the living sacred fire. I am the living presence and the living spirit. But I will reveal myself in the course of history. You will know me by my words and by my works. Now this I am presence with you is your source, your reality, and your divine self. When you walk in the shadow and the grace of this I am presence, the pillar of fire of that presence, of that chart that is behind me, it goes before you. And when you call upon the angel of the Lord for protection, 
you are protected from your own returning karma, from world karma, and from the outrages of the fallen angels who move about seeking whom they may devour. Because they are jealous when one of these little ones returns to God and determines to ascend the 33 steps of the degrees of Christhood. They are losing you from their grips, from their totalitarian mass consciousness. When you step apart and declare your independence, you need all of the hosts of the Lord. You need the mighty archangels who have been taken from your religion and from your daily life. You need the science of prayer and meditation because to determine to be God on earth, which is your fiery destiny, is the most reprehensible and blasphemous act that you could ever take part in according to the consciousness of this world and the rulers of this world. Therefore, understand that Jesus was saying even to the people and to the disciples. Unless you change, you may be subject to the same calamity. Thus, it is a warning to those who wish to come apart, as Joshua said, to be a separate people. The second lesson comes following this. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. This then shows the requirement of the fig tree to bear fruit. You are that tree. You are that fig tree. Three years the Lord has come and said, I desire fruit. We must bring fruit to the teacher, to the Christ, to the universal one who has sponsored us. We must show that there is a reason why earth should be displaced for our coming, why earth should take care of us, absorb our refuse, provide for us a path and natural resources for our creativity. And so the Lord comes and says, take it away, cut it down. And who intercedes? The Christ intercedes. Let me help the tree, let me dig around it. Let me put organic fertilizer around it. Let me help it bear fruit. So comes the Christ with his lost word, his lost teaching, his Holy Spirit, his healing hands. He will wash your feet. He will care for the roots of pride and the roots of the subconscious and the records of karma. He will help you declare your independence under God to bear fruits of the Spirit and of your hands. So we see there is a divine cooperative, even though there is a sudden descent of karma or of evil, and in one day people lose their homes. The headlines today, 53 homes burned, two people killed. Sudden destruction in the night. This is the law of karma without intercession. Why is there no intercessor? Because the people have not been taught to raise up the Christ within their temples, to expand the light of the aura, that the aura might become an energy field to prevent calamity. Thus one sees one must prepare for that day of the hardness of the returning karma and the guru we have created in our image and likeness. 
if we would declare our independence from past karma and this anthropomorphic God and the burdens and shackles wherewith we have bound ourselves, then we must bank the fires of the resurrection, of the violet flame, and of freedom against that day when we may face what our neighbors face and be prepared. So it is a marvelous teaching that if we try, if we work, if we respond to those hands and bear fruit, we may justify our existence another year and another year. And in the meantime, we add rings to our tree of life. We add the fruit of good works. We increase in light. And then we can pass the next test in our declaration of independence, which Jesus does. How many of you would pass this test? Behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. 18 years, 18 cycles, the principle of nine. The power of the three times three within her was used to sustain a matrix not of wholeness, but of incompleteness. She was bound by the laws she had set in motion, laws of her own mortality. She had bound them round about herself. This is why we need our Holy Christ self. This is why we need the mediator and the universal Christ. Because when we are all tangled up in the snarl of our human karma and beset with our diseases, we need the liberator, but the liberator cannot approach us unless we have opened the channels of our being, unless we have opened our hearts and let him come into our temple. Let him steal in in the night and be the fire of our hearts. And from that inner sanctuary of the heart, the fire glows and begins to break down those entanglements and those bonds we have created. And so she could in no wise lift up herself. There is no way that she could disentangle herself from her own karmic condition. The beauty of this is that God gave us the freedom when we demanded it to go forth, to be copycats after those fallen angels, to say we can do it, we can do it better, we can exercise free will, we of our own selves, can find the way we can pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. And God, in lovingly, words of light has said to us, be it so according unto thy desire. So in the desire of independence from him, he has allowed us to go to the very end of our rope of free will. And now we are bound and can in no wise lift ourselves up. Then God sends the mediator, the light emanation of your own I am presence, here in the figure of Jesus, so you could know what is the Christ, who is the anointed one of your temple, who is the Messiah who comes to liberate you now. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Who here dares to follow the path of Jesus Christ, to increase the light of his temple and his chakras, to fill himself with the spirit of God and to appeal unto the Lord God that when the woman bound 18 years comes, you have the wherewithal to transfer the light. The command, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Infirmity is karma. Christ, the light of the world, takes unto himself that burden and returns to her the light lost. And it is transferred by the touch of the hand, the power of Alpha and Omega. He, in his wholeness, places upon her the wholeness of the currents of the I Am Presence. 
Jesus had full access to that I am presence. You have it also. You need only prove it, demonstrate it, and dare to be the light bearer of your I am. So here comes the test. He performed a mighty work, but it was on the Sabbath. Not only must you have the courage to be the light, but to know that the light itself is not subject unto man-made laws. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. In them, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. It may occur to you that this would not happen today, but you see, this is the perpetual Sabbath. This is the seventh day. This is the 2,000-year dispensation of the seventh ray. This is the age of rest, which means recreation in God. Do you know how many nations in the world there are where I cannot go today and declare myself as a healer? I will be locked up or imprisoned because I say that God through me may heal someone. Many nations, so-called free nations. Ernest Angley was arrested in Germany. My students tell me I cannot go to Germany as a healer. That happens to be federal laws of federal governments. But what about the laws made by man? Yes, in the synagogues of America. Yes, in the churches that say, you may not heal in the name of Saint Germain. You may only heal in the name of Jesus Christ. You may not heal unless you heal according to our laws, our orthodoxy, our tradition. Jesus said, leave them alone. If they be not against us, then they are for us. Some were healing in his name without authorization. So the disciples were concerned. So you understand that there is more than limitation merely by laws. There is limitation of the Sabbath day by world condemnation of a teaching it does not understand. It is the teaching of the heart, the revolution of the heart, it is the true mysticism. It is the quest for the Holy Grail. It is the quest for truth of one's being. There is an outer tradition of religion in this world, and there is an inner tradition. The outer tradition is passed down from physical person to physical person, but the inner tradition is passed by the Spirit. How else could Jesus Christ have been made a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who came and met Abraham, served him communion, and Abraham tithed to him a tenth of the spoils. Jesus was born thousands of years later, and yet he was a priest in that tradition. Who anointed him? Where did his priesthood derive? Thus, we understand there is a spiritual transfer. There is a spiritual light of the Holy Ghost who touches whomsoever he will in any faith or religion, any organization, whether the doctrine is right or wrong. If the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you, he will come upon you. And when he comes upon you, he will deliver you of your sense of mortality and your bondage and your darkness and your sense of separation and compartmentalization, and you become a universal spirit with the Lord Christ. This is happening today all over the world. It is a universal age. And the revolutionaries have to come apart and have the strength to challenge those who say, you may not heal on the Sabbath. The Lord then answered him and said, 
Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. They rejoiced because he, the example, stood in their midst and declared their independence from laws of tyrants, man-made laws confining the God flame. You see the rejoicing is that one man raised up the spirit of the I am, the Christ spirit. One man did it and that light put them to shame. What one can do, all can do. That is the motto of the great white brotherhood. All the saints in heaven have shown that. What one has done, anyone can do. That is why we cheer when freedom fighters in any nation gain the victory over any tyranny or darkness, because it proves we have won something also. We have won the day for the Lord. This is that day. This is that day when you can come and wash in the pool of Siloam. You can be healed and cleansed, not by a miracle healing, not merely by belief or faith, but by your exercise of the science of the I am present. I'd like to give you now a visualization of what you can look like in your finer bodies, your spiritual bodies, as you develop the light. This is always your starting point, your daily point of origin, the chart of your I am presence. This is not a symbol. It is the actuality where you are right now. Each and every one of you, as promised by Jeremiah, can sit under his own vine and fig tree. Here you are, a runner in the race of life, looking to receive the crown of your immortality. You have seven planes of God's consciousness vibrating in your temple, focused in seven spiritual chakras, which release their energy to you through the central nervous system, the ganglionic centers. Over this crystal cord descending from your mighty I am presence, you receive the nourishment of light, life, and the forces you need to function. This is your heart chakra. Twelve petals establish its unique vibration. Every plane of the seven heavens of being is represented in your body. These seven planes are at the spheres of your causal body, now focused in these wheels within wheels. They are wheels of the law of your being, and they have an accelerated or a decelerated action according to each individual's application of the law. Here you see the three chakras above the heart. The heart is pink, center of love. The throat chakra is the center of your power, power of the spoken word, the power to create. It has 16 petals. It is blue and you can develop it and purify it so that the words you speak when you give the mantra or the dynamic decree have increasing power because God is intensifying himself through that particular power center. You see the third eye chakra, 96 petals, 2 times 48. It is a very detailed chakra where the all-seeing eye of God has all awareness and all vision, peripheral vision of your life. It is the original organ of seeing, descending apart from God out of alignment. We relegated ourselves to a relative vision. We look at someone one way, we say he is a great person. We look at him in another way, we say he is a scoundrel. 
This is the problem of two-eyed vision. We can never quite decide what is actuality when we assess human events. The crown chakra, the golden light, thousand petal lotus, illumination of the mind of God. These centers are real and you can feel them when you raise the life force on the spinal altar and intensify it. And that life force intensifies when you use the violet flame because you are clearing the channels, clearing the karma, transmuting wrong desire. And so more and more of God's light flows in your temple. The emerald green of the all-seeing eye of God is the power of life through vision. What you see, you become. The three chakras below the heart are for our sustainment in form. The solar plexus is the seat of desire, the place of the sun and the place of peace. When all of your desires are flowing in one channel, you have the supreme power of God's desire within you to bring about constructive change. The solar plexus then with its ten petals, the seat of the soul with its six. That seat of the soul chakra is where approximately we refer to the point of the gut. It's the point of the attachment of the soul to the physical form. The soul abides in the records of previous incarnations. Our souls know because they are tied into the subconscious and in the subconscious are the records and memories of the past. The outer mind does not know, but it may derive feelings or impressions or kind of instantaneous awareness because the soul has the premonition. The soul may sense the danger when the outer mind denies it. The base of the spine chakra, the purity of the mother life force. Four petal chakra, foundation of our pyramid in matter. From that chakra, we raise the sacred fire, which awakens these petals, causing the chakras to begin to spin as wheels of the law. I would like to make a series of calls for you now in a meditation so that you can have a prayer from my heart that is general and specific for the healing invocations I will make for you personally. If you uncross your legs, sit erect in your chair. Be conscious now of the fact that your spine is not merely a spine, it is the altar of God in which there can blossom God's consciousness. Please close your eyes and meditate in your heart. Retain the vision of your I am presence and Christ self, releasing the sacred fire now for your healing, for your wholeness, for your cleansing, for your preparation for the greater light to come. Beloved, mighty I am presence, mother of all life, son of God and Holy Spirit, Come now into my temple, purify and transmute all misuse of the sacred fire in the base chakra of the mother. Intensify the violet flame, O God, by thy sacred breath, intensify now. Let the light of the mother restore divine wholeness within my four lower bodies. Let the light of the mother rise within me according to the direction and the God control of my own Christ self. Blaze forth and rise now, Mother Light. Rise for the quickening of the seat of the soul chakra. Rise now for the mighty quickening. Violet flame within the heart of hearts of my own soul. Intensify and liberate me in the octaves of perfection. O Holy One of God, Lord Christ, stoop now to gather my soul unto the secret chamber of my heart. Divine Mother, enfold me in your swaddling garment. Sacred fire rise within me by the power of the sacred fire breath. O 
Oh, seal now my soul in the sun of light. Seal my solar plexus in God's desire. Purify now my body of emotions. Purify fears and doubts and tremblings and burdens in that solar plexus. Oh, Helios and Vesta, seal each one now and in this hour of divine perfection. Lo, I am assimilating thy light, O God. O Christ of me, come into my chakras. Let the divine consciousness of my causal body appear. Flaming presence of purple and gold, violet flame and white fire, rising mother light, trinity of manifestation, Ida Kingala and Sushinda, now be filled with the light of the Divine Mother. Purge and purify the body, the central nervous system, the arteries and veins. By sacred fire, heal me, O God. Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. Come into my heart, O threefold flame, expand. Love, wisdom, and power be balanced now in the sun of suns. Fiery flame of living love intensify where I am. I visualize now by the power of the all-seeing eye within me the rising of the mighty flow of the kundalini fire. O oh, sacred light, quicken and awaken me. Let thy consciousness come into my temple now. Rise upon the altar of being. Quicken in me now, O oh God, thy perfect peace. Mighty law of the crown, let the divine magnet on the crown of my head now be the drawing power of the mother flame within me. Power of the spoken word, Elohim of God come forth, violet flame from the heart of the central sun, flow now through the creative word. Lord God almighty Elohim, within my world I hear thee say, let there be light, and there is light, and I am whole, I am free. I am whole to espouse life, to consume by thy sacred fire all death and momentums of death within me. All-seeing eye of God, restore in me the vision of my origin, thy divine image. Lo, I am made in the image and likeness of Elohim. I affirm now where I am that I am. God in me is the divine image, appearing in every cell and atom of my four lower bodies. Lo, I am that I am in the central sun of every cell, radiating light and wholeness now. O universal mind of God, I claim thee as my own. Lo, I am letting that mind manifest within me now, which was in Christ Jesus and Gautama Buddha, Mother Mary and Kuan Yin, the White Goddess, Lord Lanto and Moses, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Michael, hear my call and answer now. Lo, in my heart of hearts, O oh God, I affirm thy name, I am that I am. 